Hello and good evening. Welcome to this special evening edition of the Georgia Carteret Series, hosted by the Georgia Library Association. I'm Buffy Hamilton of Creekview High School in Cherokee County, Sarah Steiner of Georgia State University, and Tessa Minshew of Georgia Perimeter College are my partners on the series planning team and are helping me co-host this evening's session. And I want to extend a special thanks to both of them for their time tonight. We're excited to be able to highlight trends, innovation, and best practices in Georgia's academic, public, and school libraries. While the focus is on highlighting Georgia speakers and programs, <coughs> excuse me, the webinars are open to anyone, anywhere, so please feel free to bring a friend. If anyone is viewing with a partner or a group tonight, please let us know that in the chat. This evening's session will be archived and we'll be posting that information on the series website as well as via email to you. If you're going to be tweeting the session this evening, I'm going to pop in our webinar series hashtag, which will be hashtag Carteret, if you would like to share or give any shout outs on Twitter with us this evening. I'm going to share three helpful hints with you before we get started. First, the microphone and whiteboard tools are disabled for participants. If you'd like to communicate, please use the text chat area to ask questions and to comment. Secondly, if you don't hear the audio, try logging out and logging back in. Third, if you need an attendance certificate, stay tuned for the end of our session and we will share a URL where you can obtain that. We want to take just a brief moment to tour the participant interface. In the main section of your screen is the whiteboard window, which is the right half of what you see. This is where you will be seeing Holly's slides this evening and where she'll be sharing and giving us a tour of Weebly. On the far left side is our participant window where you can see who all is in the session with us this evening. You also have to the left side the chat window where you can type in questions or comments. And then last but not least, you'll see in the lower left-hand corner of your screen the audio window. And remember that during the presentation, your audio will be disabled. If you'd like to grab the microphone during our Q&A time, please let us know through the chat box and we'll turn on your microphone for you. Just a other few features about the participants window. If you'd like to raise your hand to ask a question, you can do that by pressing the hand icon. We also have emoticons to express pleasure, perhaps confusion, hopefully not, because Holly's going to do a wonderful job for us this evening telling us about Weebly. We also have polling tools if we choose to have any voting this evening. And if for any reason you need to leave the session temporarily, please use the icon that looks like an open door to step away from the session, and then you can press that icon again to re-enter. At this time, I want to tell you a few more technical items before I introduce you to Holly. Again, attendance certificates are now done online and we'll share that URL with you and we'll email you that link. Secondly, remember that moderators can see your chats even if they are sent privately. And third, the webinars are being recorded and archived and again we'll be sharing the link with, to the archives with you. Thank you so much for your kind attention with our housekeeping, and now it's time to get started. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Holly Freelo. Holly is currently a school librarian at Collins Hill High School in Gwinnett County. She is passionate about using technology and educating students to use technology effectively. She is also a former language arts teacher and has earned three degrees from the University of Georgia, and she worked in editing and marketing prior to her education career. So without any further ado, please join me in giving Holly a warm welcome as she shares with us her vast knowledge about using Weebly for creating library websites. Holly, take it away. Thank you, Buffy, for that very kind introduction. <clears throat> Hopefully my audio is okay for you guys. If it's not, let me know. Um, I was hoping that it would be better tonight, but anyway, it's a little strange to look at yourself on a screen here, so I'm going to move us along. Um, and I am just a humble librarian, and one of my passions just happens to be creating websites. And so I hope what I can offer you tonight is an easy way to make a website um, so that you don't feel overwhelmed, so that you don't feel like you have to know HTML code. 
Um, and so that's what we're going to try and do tonight. So um, this is easy website creation with Weebly. Weebly is just one of those um, website creators that's out there. <coughs> and um, and it's the one that I found that works the best for me. Um, and I'm sorry about my audio. I'm trying the best that I can. <coughs> and sorry, I'm also a little congested, so that probably doesn't help matters. Um, so Weebly is a free website creator. Um, it is very easy to use. If you feel comfortable creating documents with your pictures and text, like you know, a publisher file or a Word file creating a text box, um, that is all you really need to be able to do. And um, I spent some time, when I became um, a media specialist about four years ago, we had a website that um, was very dated, um, looked like the early 90s. And so I spent some time trying to figure out what would be the best way for me to create a website. And I can do Dreamweaver a little bit, but I really, really wanted to focus on the content, not with where my passion is, but I also felt passionate about that we needed a good web presence. And so I did some investigating, and Weebly was one of Time Magazine's 50 Best Websites. Um, it's won Education Awards. And um, frankly, it's going to make you look good. If those of you out there are old enough to remember when um, people did PowerPoint, and we all thought that they were computer gurus and made everything look awesome, I feel like websites are like that now. There's so many tools out there that can make you look good, um, and you don't have to know a whole lot about HTML code. OK, so um, one of the things people say, they're like, OK, I've got the computer skills, but I don't have any time. And I just think that you know, having a current, valid, updated website is a vital component of library media centers, whether you're a public librarian or K through five or high school. I just think that it's one of those things that we all need to make sure that we're staying on top of. Um, so, <clears throat> but know that you're going to start slowly, and it will never be finished. So you kind of have to be okay with that. Um, some people I know have a hard time with that. But the nice thing is, is you continue to grow your website. You can add things in a heartbeat. You don't have to wait for anybody to update a site for you. Um, if you have a school that will allow you to do that, I'm fortunate to work at one of those schools. It's nice because the teachers, they can email me an assignment, or they can email me anything. And you know I can turn it around just as quickly as I have access to the computer. Um, and in the long run, I just think it will save you time. I do all of my research guides, and I post them online. And that way, they're always there, and the teachers always have access to them. Um, and so I feel like it's a great resource for all of your students, all of your teachers, all of your staff, um, just so that everything there um, is for them. Yeah, the research guides um, have worked out really well. I actually ended up using um, Wikispaces to create the research guides, but I linked them off of our website. And as a result, they're just always there, and the teachers can access them. Them. There's, you know, the teachers that use the same things over and over each year, um, and I just update them like I did. And we have a teacher doing Black History Month project right now, and I can just update. You know, she made a few changes to her project, and I just updated those changes, and I can do it right then. Um, and this is something that comes up occasionally when I talk to people about creating websites. My principal says every teacher department website has to look exactly the same. There's a lot of schools out there that do this, um, that you have to have, you know, the language arts department, the media center, the sports teams, everything has to look exactly the same. And hopefully, you know, there's a little bit of a workaround because I just don't think that a one size fits all model is good for that. So there was a, um, a high school near us in Gordon County, Brooklyn High School Day. Their principal told them that, that they had to use the same framework as everything, as everybody else. and. Uh, and they were frustrated by that. And in a very flattering fashion, they took our website, the Collins Hill website, and showed the principal at Brooklyn and said, this is what we want to do. We want to do something like this and have the freedom you know, to be able to create a site that really meets the needs of our teachers and students. And lo and behold, they let the principal let them create a site using Weebly because they saw what was possible. Um, and so that's just a little story that's out there because I know some people get frustrated by, you know, their principal or somebody saying that they can't do it. Okay, so you'll see periodically that I have these little pictures to kind of change things up 
Um, I noticed that after I wrote this PowerPoint, it looks like I'm talking to myself throughout this whole entire thing, so bear with me. Um, so I assume everybody now is in and they want to know how Weebly works, so we're going to walk through a little bit of how Weebly looks and how you sign up um, and do some of those screenshots and then hopefully look at a few sites that people have done out there and then do a little live demo and hopefully we'll cross our fingers and that'll work. So this is what Weebly looks like. This is where you go, www.weebly.com to um, sign up. You need a username, a password, and um, an email address. And you can use whatever one you want. I use my school email because it just works for me, but you can use anything. And then I wanted you to see that Weebly is very clean. It's very easy. It's very straightforward. To me, there's nothing confusing about it. There's very little learning curve. Um, and so you see here, you just click on create a site. That's pretty straightforward. And then you'll be prompted to name your site. So you can see there's the name of ours, the Collins Hill High School Media Center. And that's the only site that I have right now. You can have two separate sites if you want to for free with Weebly. Um, and I forgot to mention, we'll talk about three things with Weebly tonight. One is regular Weebly, which is free. And then there's a paid version that you can have to upgrade a few things if you want, but you can do a very extensive website without having to pay a thing. Um, but Weebly Pro is $40. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Weebly for Education, which I am new to. They launched that in um, late 2009, but it has a lot of great qualities that I'm pretty excited about for um, teachers that you can take back to your school and talk to your teachers about. Okay, and then down there at the bottom it says later you'll want to use these buttons when you want to edit your site. So simply all you'll do is log in and then you click edit site. There's also a button for statistics, which um, for those of you who um, need to show your principal or need to show somebody's statistics, you can show how many hits your website gets, um, which is nice. They provide pretty good stats for you. Okay, and then the next screen will make you choose your website domain. And, um, you know, this is where decision time comes in. Um, but the first option is the free option where you use the subdomain of Weebly. So you get to pick what your URL is, except for at the end it says .weebly.com. And that's how I started off. Eventually we purchased our own domain name, um, which you can do. You know, it's fairly cheap to have a domain um, for a year's subscription. Um, and so you can choose to either use the subdomain of Weebly, um, register a new domain, meaning you're going to purchase one, or use a domain that you already own. So if you have one, you can kind of migrate it over um, to Weebly if you want to. Okay, so all the admin stuff being taken care of, not my favorite thing to do. I like to be creative and, and within the framework of them deciding a lot of things for me so I don't have to know HTML code. And, um, and start talking about the content and the way that this is going to look. <coughs> and they do. They make the admin option very easy and easy. So now it's time to choose your theme. They have lots of different themes, probably at least 75 um, different themes for you to choose from. And this is always a tough one when I was teaching this class this afternoon. The teachers were all like, ooh, I can't decide. <laughs> but anyway, you can peruse all of these different themes. You'll see over there on the left side, they have categories. There's an education category. Um, over there, excuse me, you can do dark colors, you can do, you know, simple, there's all, all kinds of things to choose from. And, um, and there's some things to consider when you're talking about design because it's easy to kind of get caught up um, in, you know, the way that things look. But you want to, you know, think about do you want a header image? We have one on ours and I like it. Some people don't want to have that. They would rather have the real estate on the page for other things. Um, so you think about if you want a header image and what menu style and placement is best for you because by the theme that you choose, you're locked into that type of menu. And by that I mean do you want the menu over here on the left side or do you want the menu up at the top? Um, and so those are the decisions you kind of have to think about. And then you also have to think about your audience. And for us in high school or middle school or elementary school, um, libraries, that seems to be my focus, so that's what I think about. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, we have to think about all of our different audiences, principals, teachers, students. We kind of have to have a blend of all of that. So that's why our website is pretty simple and straightforward, but also egocentric towards students. I try to have as many student pictures 
as I can on the website because that way I can still have it clean, but there's still something of interest there for the students to look at. Um, and lastly, one of the great things is changing your theme does not mean that you have to recreate your content. All of your content will automatically migrate to whatever theme that you choose. So we've done three or four different themes, I think, since I've created our website. And, um, and it just always pulls all of that information with you. So that's a nice thing to know that you don't have, you know, if you wanted to make major changes, you don't have to recreate any of your content. Okay, so here's what it looks like. And you'll see there's a menu here up at the top. We're in the elements menu and basic. And literally, really, all you do is select one of those things at the top and drag it onto the page. So if you wanted a paragraph with a picture, like right up here, you just click on that and drag it and put it on the page. And then it will give you the opportunity to edit that paragraph with picture. Same thing over here on the right. You see there's the two column layout, which I use pretty frequently. Um, and you just drag that, put it on the page, and then you've got two columns built in. And then you just keep building your page from there. You can put as little or as much as you want on a particular page. And then you'll see here, so here I've, I've dragged onto the page a, a paragraph with a picture, and this is what it looks like. So I click here to edit the title, just start typing. I click here to edit the paragraph, and I just start typing. And then I click on the image, and I get a little window that pops up and allows me to choose whatever image I have saved on my computer. Um, or I think it, there's a search uh, using Flickr. Flickr, unfortunately, is blocked in our county. But um, you know you can use that if you would like to. So it makes it very, very easy. Just like adding an email attachment um, is um, how you put a picture on there. So there's nothing to worry about with like FTP or HTML or anything like that. It makes it pretty straightforward. Now Weebly will automatically change, or excuse me, they will automatically save everything that you have that you're working on. I think it saves every 30 seconds or a minute. But um, and then you can use the publish button up here in the upper right frequently to update your changes. So as soon as you create something, you hit publish, it's live and it has been changed, which is a nice feature over if somebody else is in control of your website and you have to email them a change, and then you have to wait for that turnaround time. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Okay, so she's saying, I can do that. I know y'all are all saying the same thing. So tell me what else we can do. So here we go. Okay, now, if the phrase HTML gives you shivers up and down your spine and makes you break out into a little bit of a sweat, don't worry. I promise you don't have to know any HTML. But what I do like to do sometimes is go out to other websites and create something, like a slideshow. Um, I use picnic.com or slide.com, although slide a lot of times now has ads. But anything that you go out there and you create, and there's a little thing that says embed or HTML code or something like that, you can get that code, copy, and paste that into this little box right here. So just like any of these other forms, you just take the custom HTML box, pull it down onto the page, and um, and then paste in that code. And then that slideshow will be there. If anybody went to our website, you'll see there's a slideshow on the front page. And so all I did was I did exactly that. I think the latest one I made in Picnic, it gave me the HTML, HTML code. I just pasted it in there. So it looks like I know a lot, but I don't, um, which is kind of nice. People are always impressed. And I'm like, really? It's not that hard. Same thing with widgets. Um, anything out there where you get the HTML code, that's all you have to do to add that to your weekly page. Okay, so I'm still in the elements menu up at the top. I've changed it over to multimedia. I just wanted to see what I just wanted y'all to see all the other choices that you have. Um, photo gallery, slideshow. These are not recent additions, but you used to have to have a Flickr account. Like I said, it's blocked in my county, so that didn't do me very much good. But I don't think that that's the case anymore. So any of these tools you can slide or you can choose and you can put them on your page. Um, and uh, you know, you can do even a flash. YouTube videos if your school doesn't block or if your system doesn't block YouTube videos, you can put those on really easily. And you'll notice some of these say pro. 
CRO there down there in the corner. I don't know if you can read it or not. And those are the features that you have to have the pro account to be able to do like embed audio and embed video. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But files you can put on there pretty easily. You know, if the teacher needed to upload a file, that's the homework assignment. Um, they can do that. Okay, and adding pages is also really easy. You'll see we're on the Manage Pages. We just click on the Pages tab up here. We just click on New Page. You name your page. Um, and then you can edit it. You can save it down there at the bottom if you want to. And then you can choose whether or not you want it to show in the navigation menu. And that's nice because you can hide pages and link them from different places. You don't have to have everything in that top menu. Um, and so you choose yes or no. And this page also allows you to put your pages or menu in the order that you want. So these are just boxes that you can drag and drop, and you can put them in different places um, according to how you want your menu to read. Now you'll notice some of them come flush or all the way flush over to the left, and some of them are bumped over to the right a little bit. And the right ones are simply a drop-down menu. So when I scroll over the research tab on our website, all of these different options drop down. So instead of having it all the way across, it's drop down. So that's a way to get more out of your real estate a little bit. Yeah, and somebody's saying don't delete a page unless you're sure um, you don't ever want it again. That's very true. Because you can always hide pages. Um, if I could scroll down to this thing, I'd show you that there's a lot of hidden pages that I don't use anymore. However, you've got, you know, a lot of space on there. So you can just leave those pages on there. Better safe than sorry. Good tip. Oh, and there's my cute daughter, and she's gorgeous. <laughs> I just think this is a funny picture. Um, so she's saying, I've got the basics. Show me the chips and tricks, please. So here we go. I know, she looks like a bobblehead, doesn't she? <laughs> okay, so it's easy to add links and files. A lot of times this worries people, especially if you're from back in the day where you had to FTP everything, you had to worry about how to get files on there before you link to them. <coughs> Excuse me. But Weebly makes it really easy. <clears throat> um, yeah, so if you were typing, so you'll see here in this image where I'm typing, it says to add a link to your page, highlight the text, and use the link to above. So I highlighted the word highlight. And then you click on that little link icon, and you get a pop-up window. And it gives you a whole bunch of choices. You can link to another one of your Weebly pages. You can click the link to something out there on the web. You can choose files. And Weebly used to have, you have to have a workaround to upload to different pages. But anyway, um, now they give you the option to just upload a file right then and there, which is nice. Um, so that's how you can add links and files really easily um, to your page. And then the header image can now be different on each page. When I started with Weebly, Every single page had to have the same header image, and it drove me crazy. And I emailed them enough, and probably other people did, and so they made us, or they made it able so we could have different images on each page. Because a lot of times, especially if your picture takes up a good, you know, chunk of your real estate, it doesn't look like you necessarily change the page if you're working on old school screens like we are at my house or at my school, um, which we're going through the retrofit now. But anyway, so. They've made the tool for the header images so great now. So you just click on Edit Image. You can import any picture you want. Um, they have a built-in photo editing tool. So you don't have to worry about going to Photoshop or going to Picnic.com or going to any place and really, you know, like working on your image. Because you'll see, you know, that's a long, skinny picture. So that's not the whole picture that I took. Um, it's just a part of it. And so they make the tool really easy. Um, and then they also give you a feature where you can choose, I want it on 10 pages, or I want it on these four pages, or I just want it on this page, <coughs> which is a nice option to have too. You don't have to upload that picture for 20 different pages. OK. So at this point, you all heard me talking a lot, and you're sitting at a keyboard, and I know your fingers are getting itchy, because mine always do. So what I wanted to do was, there's a link over there in that chat box. So if you want to choose that link and open up an Internet Explorer window or Firefox or whatever you have and paste that in there so that you can look at that website, these are some of the ones that teachers have done at my school 
Um, and another one is the counseling department. Um, they did a Weebly site as well. So I just wanted y'all to see some different things that are out there. If you go to uh, Ms. Smith's Latin uh, website, you'll see hers is looking pretty good. Um, and she has all kinds of stuff on her website. I just wanted y'all to see these because once you go and do your great Weebly website, if you're at a school, um, lots of teachers are going to start asking you how to do this. And the nice thing is, is most teachers can handle this on their own and you don't have to hold their hands and walk them through it, you know, which is a nice feature. So I've had teachers come up to me and say, oh, how did you do that? And um, I'm like, yeah, you just get, log on to Weebly and it's pretty straightforward. And so these teachers really have done this on their own. So the Latin one, you'll see she's got her warm-up online, um, which is great for when students are absent. Um, and they can go and they can see all kinds of things. She's got her calendar built in to her website. That's something that I have not tried, but it looks like she's got a Google Calendar built in. And you can just browse these you know, while I'm talking um, and see the different things that people can do. Especially with the free, because sometimes people are like, oh, well, she has a paid version and I'm not going to be able to have that. But there's lots of things that you can do. If you go to Ms. Dean's um, page, you see she has a class calendar too. <clears throat> but she also has, if you click from that home page, she also has, are you in first period? Click here to go to Mrs. Dean's document. And you'll see she's uploaded several documents um, and she, she has the free account. Um, so sometimes people get worried about space. And you, I mean, you've got, I think, five meg uploads. Anyway, you've got a decent amount of space. You can see on there she's uploaded a lot of docs and a few um, PowerPoint files. Um, so you do get a decent amount of space with the free account. The counseling department at our school, if you click on that one, you'll see their menu underneath their picture and then the word more. And so some of the menus are set up this way where um, they have a lot of links. And so that's how they get all of those links on there. And so you can click on the More button. And then the drop-down menu will come up for all of the rest of their links. And then the very last one is the history of Dr. Martin Luther King. And this is something that I thought was really cool. National History Day, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with that. It's kind of like science fair for social studies. And it's a little bit of a big deal at our school. Um, in a lot of the social studies classes participate in National History Day. And this year, they added a Weebly website as one of the options for how to present your project. So, you know, there's like the standard stuff, like a trifold board, which I still think is crazy that we still need. But anyway, um, you know, all of the regular options, but then National History Day partnered with Weebly, and they had a specific login for National History Day students where they could create Weebly websites. And so this is an example, the Dr. Martin Luther King one is an example of um, one of those projects. Which I just think is really cool that a kid, you know, can go, go through and create this and make something that looks as sleek as I think the Weebly website to do, and then they can turn that in as their project. And I tell kids all the time, you know, save all this stuff because you'll have some great things to show off if ever the, you know, the need may arise for a scholarship or you know, anything like that, and you can show off what you can do. Um, so those are just some examples of what other people have done um, with Weebly. Okay. Good. I'm glad y'all were liking looking at those examples because I just think it's neat to see what other people are, or, you know, what other people can do with it. Because a lot of times they pick up on stuff that you don't. Um, and I think it's nice as for those of us out there that are school librarians, not only can we create our own site, but then we can help teachers create their sites. I know especially as budgets are waning, um, a lot of things like uh, Homework Now or whatever those homework sites are going away because they're not as cost effective. And, you know, if every teacher in the school created a Weebly website, that wouldn't cost anybody a thing except for time. So, um, anyway. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's talk about Weebly Pro because, uh, yeah, somebody, Holly's mentioning the Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver page book. Yeah, I mean, Dreamweaver can do some awesome things, but holy smokes, it takes a lot of time and 
I'm just like, no, I want to focus on the content. I want to focus on moving my program forward. I want my, you know, my website to reflect my program that's going on in the library, which so it needs to be dynamic and, you know, easily updated. And so I think Weebly is a good fit for me. I've worked in Google Sites too, um, and I'm a huge Google fan. But I find that Weebly, for me, works a little bit better and looks a little bit sleeker um, than Google Sites. Okay, so Weebly Pro is $40 per year, which to me is not a huge investment if it's something that you're looking to do, because it's $40 for the whole year, which I'm not good at math, but that can't be very much per month. Um, so you have you get your um, increased uploading space, which if you're uploading lots of huge PowerPoints, you know, things like that, you know, you might end up needing that space. Um, the nice thing, too, is that you can password protect your pages. So if you have something out there, like we have library science curriculum, and our um, media services person didn't want that curriculum to be out there on the web, but I needed a way, without working in the context of an online class, per se, for my students to be able to easily access their access their um, assignments. And so the fix, the workaround, is that I have a library science page that's password protected. So only my library science students know that password. It's not anything that can be searchable by Google or anything like that. Um, so it's nice to be able to have that option. And then you also get to add a really easy to use video player and audio player, which automatically converts things for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, using a particular player or anything like that, or QuickTime versus Windows Media Player or anything like that. It's embedded in your site, um, and it puts the videos in for you. Um, you can also have up to 10 sites per account. Free allows for two. So if you have a need for lots and lots and lots of sites, you can use that. You get a little bit more in the statistics. Um, the Weebly footer is removed. Weebly is great about ads. They're not putting ads on your pages. The Weebly footer is all the way down at the bottom, and all it says is make a free website with Weebly. Um, it's pretty um, subtle, which is a good thing. And then you can embed documents on your pages. So if you wanted to embed a PDF file so that it was there on your page. Those are the things that the Weebly Pro um, will get you. I think I spent probably close to a year almost before I upgraded to Pro. Um, so don't feel like that's something that you have to do to make your website look good, because I don't think you have to at all. It just gets you a little bit extra. OK. So the last thing I really want to talk about before we start looking at a live demo is Weebly for Education. And I'll go ahead and admit that I don't know as much about this as um, I would like to. But um, I'm exploring it a lot, and I have a teacher, a business teacher that I was speaking with today who's been frustrated with the, um, I think she's been using, she's used Dreamweaver for a while, and then she used Google Sites with her students, um, but she's been hitting some roadblocks. So she and I are going to try this out together, so I'm excited about that. But Weebly for Education was launched in like late 2009, and it has added features geared towards teachers. So this is kind of geared forward, you know, you've created a good website, and you can mention this to your teachers back at your school. Um, so there's form submissions, there's online polls, there's all kinds of stuff you can do um, that teachers can do with their students. And then students can create websites too, and this is what has gotten me pretty excited, because you can have up to 40, and I know that's not many, but um, if you, you know, if a teacher created a project and one option, like National History Day, one option was to create a website you know, you're not necessarily going to have all your kids want to create a website, so it might work for you. Um, but teachers sign the students up, and then they password protect the pages if you want. So you don't have to worry about, you know, Johnny's web page being searchable by Google because you've password protected it, which is nice for all the, all the stuff we got going on with student privacy and all that. Um, and so I just think that that's a really neat feature. So students don't have to have email addresses, which sometimes I run into as a problem in school because kids don't, you know, like, I forgot my email address, or I don't know my email address, or I only check my Facebook page. Um, so it's nice to have that workaround so that students don't have to know their email addresses. Um, and then the other thing you can do is create a blog with moderated comments. And so we're going to look at that for just a few minutes. 
so here's a screen capture of the student website account. So I created an account in Weebly for Education, and you can add a class, select a grade, and here with one click you can decide whether or not you want all of those websites to be public or all of them to be private. And if you want them to be private, then you just have a password that you and all the students in the class know, and then it's um, password protected, which I think is kind of cool. And then you just go in, as it, or the teacher goes in, ask the students by name, and you give them a username and password to access their account. So they don't need any student emails. And then you just give them the website, which I think is like student.weebly.com, and that's where they go to log in. So you've given them your username and password, and all they have to do is log in. And then this is what pops up if somebody were to type in that address. So the student would determine the URL. Um, for their website. And, but if you go and you type it in, then this is what you get. So it's not out there for the public. And um, I just think that that's something that's really cool because then you don't have to worry about what Johnny's putting on his web page as much, you know, in terms of privacy. Um, and so I think that would be a really cool thing. And so I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm going to try it with that business teacher. Um, I don't know if she's going to do it this semester or she's going to try it next year, but she was super excited about um, Weebly and all it had to offer um, based on some of the hiccups that she's encountering. Okay, the last thing I want to mention is that you can have a blog with Weebly that has moderated comments. So if you decide Weebly is for you, you know, you've got your account set up, and then you can do the same thing with a blog, which is great for like language arts or social classes, you want to continue a discussion. Um, and you can do that on the blog. So just like you click on here to do a new page, then you just do a new blog. And your blog will look like your web pages. Um, it'll have a header image, and then it'll just be a running, you know, dialogue going on. And then what you have to do, so here's pros and cons. So like with a blog, it sounds cool. You're like, yeah, that's totally awesome. I'd love to continue, you know, discussion with my kids. But then you have to remember that you have to moderate all those comments. Um, and so when you log in um, on that more button, it says blog comments. And so you can go in there to see your um, the blog comments and approve or deny them. But then again, you don't have to worry about somebody saying something awful um, and it being published. And then you have the back pedal. Um, you get to approve all these comments before they go out. OK. So what we're going to try to do, I want you to be able to see the functionality of Weebly. So we are going to try to, and Sarah may have to help me here, um, <clears throat> go to Weebly and I can log into my account and show you some of the tools and just show you how kind of straightforward it is. Okay. I think we're going to try and do the desktop sharing. And if someone can remind me which button I need to push. Okay, I'm working on it. Bear with me, everybody. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing, which is my Weebly account. And it's a little squished, perhaps, where some of the buttons are kind of laying over the top of the web page. Um, but what I wanted you to see is now switch, switch screens to manage pages. So we're going to say I want to create a new page. So I'm clicking on new page. And so right now, let's say we want to make a page called dinner. I haven't eaten yet. Mm -hmm. All right, and so I can click yes or no. I want to show this in navigation menu. I'm going to click no because we're just kind of playing around here. And then I'm going to click edit page. So you should see a little button that says loading. 
and hopefully, there we go. So it's going to give me a page. It's going to automatically default to that image that I have on my home page. But then I can always go over here to the right hand side and click edit. And it should say edit image. And then this is the photo editing tool. So you can actually change your image by clicking this add image button. It'll just give you a pop up window where you can, you know, go out there and choose whatever image you want. And you can add text as well. So um, you'll see there's example text down there. Things are a little shifted because the window is smaller. But. And then you can create text directly on top of your image, um, which is really nice. And that's a new feature as well. And then over here, you can click Save. You click the down arrow. You can save image to all pages, only this page. Or you can select all of the pages that you want that image to show up on, which is also a really nice feature and a big time saver. So I'm going to cancel. But then, so here, let's say I want the two-column layout. So I'm going to just drag that, and I'm going to put it on the page, and there I've got my two-column layout. Um, let's say I want the, the box on the right there to be a little bit smaller. I'm just drag that and make it two columns with one big one and one small one. And then, let's say I need a paragraph with a picture. All I do is I put it in that box, I want it right over there. Then I'm going to click here to edit, and so it just gives me the, op the option to, you know, title. Okay, so then I just write what I want to do that. And then let's, see, let's talk about the paragraph. Okay. There we go. And then right here, if I wanted to, I just click on this to edit um, the image. So if I have a file on my computer, I just choose whatever file I want. If I want to, I can go to the photo gallery, and you'll see it's search and flicker um, for a picture. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, oh, no, it's not because I'm under my school account, so it's going to block it. But you get the idea. You know, you can choose the file. You can go to a photo gallery. You can go out on the Internet. Um, and it just must be one of these file types, which is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and that's it. So I could click publish, and this page would be published. Um, and it really is just that simple. Um, and then same thing over here. If all I wanted was a paragraph, I just drag a paragraph. It lets it onto the page, and then I can start talking, um, or I can start typing. Sorry. And then let's see the custom HTML box. I can put one of those in there, and you can see. So just put the box in there, and then I just it says click to set custom HTML, and then if I have my HTML already copied, and then I just paste it in there. Um, so there you have it. You decide you don't want something, you just click that little red X. You want me to delete it? Yep. Take it off in there, and then you're good to go. So if I switch over to the multimedia, that's where I have those other options. I like to put a file on the page. Um, if you wanted to do something where you just had a file, rather than creating a link, um, you put that on there, you get your little menu to upload a new file, and then you can position it where you want. Um, but again, I mean, super, super easy. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to show off here. So those are all the elements. These are the design options. If you get to this design page, you're clicking on this tab. You can choose all themes, and that's going to show you all of them, all of the things that they have available to you. And then say, okay, I like this one. Let me preview it, which is a nice feature. They didn't need to have this feature. So you take your, it's going to take all of your content, and it's going to preview it for you. So here's what my menu would look like. Here's how everything would change on my page. Um, if I want to choose that. So it's still our website, but they just put it in a different theme. So the night, and it's so great that you can preview a theme like this with your content in it without committing. So you just click View Theme if you want to, or you click Cancel. I don't want to change my theme, never mind. But it's nice to have that feature to be able to preview 
what your exact website would look in these different things. And then over here you can choose, you know, different categories if you want to. The education one, I think there's like five. Yeah, there's five here. Geared a little bit more towards education, maybe than some of the others. But, um, and then there's dark colors, there's light colors, depending on what you're going for. And then there's the pages menu. And you can see, here's all the pages that I have. Some of them are hidden. Some of them are hidden because they don't have or, um, updated information, or some of them are just hidden because they're linked somewhere um, on our website. So there's all, I mean, I have you know, tons of pages out there. Um, you can see all those different ones. Does anybody have any questions? Holly, we did have a question pop up in the chat, and you may not have been able to see it um, with the desktop sharing. Um, but um, we have someone who wants to know if you have tried to import themes from WordPress into uh, Weebly. That's a really good question, and I have not tried that. I don't know. Um, I think I'm pretty sure they have the option where you can create your own theme if you're feeling brave and uh, and the cool like that, and you can do stuff like that. But um, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that question. Okay, thank you. Um, we're roughly about 12 minutes or so from uh, the end of our session, so um, we'll continue at this time now to do some Q&A for Holly. And uh, Holly, our next question that's come up in the uh, chat box, um, Carol wants to know, would you maintain a professional portfolio using Weebly? Definitely. I think that's a great option. In fact, the class that I taught this afternoon, I have a teacher who she's a para-pro and she's um, going back to school to get her, um, I forget what degree she's getting, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and she was like, well, yeah, when I get hired, I'm excited because I can do a website, you know, using Weebly, and I was like, go ahead and get started now, you know, put up your portfolio and impress people, especially now with the job market being so hard, um, you know, and have that out there so that people can see your work and principals can see what you can do and how you can be a leader in technology in your school, um, whether you're a teacher or a media specialist or anything like that. Okay, fantastic. And um, we're just getting some additional comments in the chat about different individuals who are using Weebly uh, for that purpose as a professional portfolio. Um, the next question that's popping up in chat is, I guess, about the stability of the company. Um, I think we've all had encounters or experiences with uh, Web 2.0 uh, vendors, if you will, or open source types of uh, content creators um, that, you know, of course, unfortunately, some have fallen by the wayside. Um, but is there um, anything you could share with us uh, that you might know in your dealings as to um, you know, their, their commitment to being in it for the long haul? I'll tell you, I have had, besides being frustrated with some of the things that they were a little bit slow to catch up with, like the header images and some of the things um, that I thought they needed to update, I have had nothing but great experiences with Weebly. Um, and I've been using them since probably 2007, 2008. Um, and they have a pretty good help section. And if you email them, they typically email back within 24 hours um, and have helped me out with, like, they'll give me a little tiny piece of code to figure out what I, you know, to help me figure out what I need to do. Um, and I've had nothing but positive experiences. And that's why I... I think I looked into something like Snap Pages or other companies I looked into, and I was most impressed with Weebly because um, I'm not one who makes decisions very quickly sometimes, especially when it comes to something big like this. And so, yeah, the Weebly support has been um, it's been excellent the whole entire time. I don't think they're going anywhere. They keep winning awards, and um, so I don't think they're going anywhere. 
Okay, thank you, Holly. Um, our next question uh, for you, does customer service come with the paid professional version only or is customer service provided with the free account? Yes, there's customer service that's with the free account too. And um, frankly, the only difference I noticed was that it was a tiny bit faster once I upgraded to the pro account. Like they responded to my questions a little bit faster, like within a few hours as opposed to within 24 hours. Um, so I would say that there's not that much difference um, with the paid version. You still get great customer service with the free version as well. Okay, and uh, I think Peggy George is echoing those sentiments also that the primary difference is in uh, speed as opposed uh, to quality. Um, are there other questions that anyone uh, would like to share in the chat box? We have about six or seven minutes left. There's something that um, has worked for me because it's always great to go to these classes and to go to conferences and, and you learn all of these new things but then you get back to your desk and there's a big pile and you know there seems like there's so many other priorities so I always try to start small like if I go to a conference I try to do one new thing within a week um, or something like that so I just wanted to mention you know start small maybe set a goal for yourself to have your first five pages done you know, by three weeks from now um, is creating a new site is something that you're um, looking into doing. And with as easy as Weebly is, the nice thing is is you can focus, you know, 90% of what you're doing on your content, which to me is, you know, so, um, so much the point of what we're doing. I mean, I like the, you know, I like the design elements of my website, but that's not what I want to spend my time doing. I want to focus on the content. Um, so anyway, so I just thought I'd mention, you know, you can start small. You don't have to have a, you know, fantastic web page with 50 different pages on there right from the get-go. Um, you can go ahead and, and start small and set yourself little goals, and that way you can get things done. And then I know this session is being recorded and that it is um, somewhere out there for people to access. And then I just wanted to mention it's also located um, on our website. Uh, on our tutorials page, um, if people wanted to go and just have the PowerPoint slides rather than the recording of the class, um, it's out there because I think the screen captures work pretty well when you're sitting down and you're thinking and you're doing the work yourself um, and you say, hmm, what did she say about that? You can use those, that PowerPoint to kind of help guide you through if you have questions. And I'm going to turn my mic off again for a minute in case somebody else has questions because I haven't been watching that chat box. It's uh, really excellent advice, Holly, to, to start small and, uh, of course, uh, the tutorial resources. Um, I think we have time for one more question uh, before we close out this evening. Um, and this is from Amy. Uh, her question is, um, if you have a domain, can you hide the site that you're building in Weebly until you're ready to go live with it? That's a great question. I haven't tried it, so I can't answer with 100% certainty. But I think as long as your website continues to save, which Weebly will save your website for you, I've never had any issues with that, um, and you don't press that publish button, nothing will be published until you press that publish button. So I think you could keep everything hidden until, um, until you want to, you know, reveal it. Uh, and that is that's an excellent question because I think um, we all you know have gone through that experience where we're building the content, but we don't really want to you know, have it out there or available until we're ready for the the grand debut. So thank you. And uh, Peggy uh, George is um, asking Holly, um, could you tell us a little bit about backing up uh, your Weebly website? Um, well, you caught me there because I'm not so good at <laughs> remembering to back things up. Unfortunately, I have never encountered any kind of issue, so um, I can't speak to that as much as I should be able to. Um, so I don't know. Maybe somebody else can can raise their hand if we can if somebody can do that and speak to backing up your site. 
Peggy, it sounds like maybe you've had some experience <laughs> with that. Is there anything that you might want to share uh, with us in the chat box about the uh, the backup process? And, and I'm with Holly. I think that's one that we all get busy and sometimes uh, forget to do. Uh, I know I've been guilty of it. If you could tell us a little bit about that, Peggy. Okay. And it sounds like you can download that zipped archive to your desktop or an external um, hard drive. That is good to know, and it reminds me of things I need to do, I need to get better at. Peggy, is there anything? Else, did you want to add that I didn't touch on that you think is, you know, something good to know about Weebly? Um, anything you want to mention? Okay. Well, we're almost out of time for this evening, and I, first of all, would like to thank Holly for such an awesome presentation as we give her a round of applause. Um, I also want to thank all of you as participants for your fantastic questions and for sharing your resources and your own experiences uh, with Weebly and contributing to this, this larger conversation that I think has been helpful for all of us. Uh, and also special thanks to Sarah and Tessa who have been uh, behind the scenes this evening uh, helping us out. Um, just a few last minute uh, uh, housekeeping items. Uh, we uh, want to take just a moment to remember our uh, good friend uh, that we miss uh, quite quite dearly, uh, Pat Carteret, for whom this series is named, uh, who uh, whom we lost in January, um, and whom we um, always carry in our hearts and try to emulate her spirit of lifelong learning and sharing that gift of learning with others uh, through this series. Uh, we're all uh, honored to, to be part of the project. Uh, that really was uh, this vision from Pat, so we want to take a moment to just honor her memory. We also uh, would like to thank you all again for your time this evening and to let you know that we'll have some additional webinars coming up on March 16th uh, on a Wednesday during the day. Um, and uh, everyone, whether you're in Georgia or not, um, is invited to sign up, and if you can't make it in the daytime, you can still register and then access uh, the archives. Um, right now, uh, Sarah is sharing with you two important links before we say goodnight. Um, if you need a, a certificate of attendance, uh, Sarah is sharing that link at this time. And we also would like everyone to take just a moment um, to complete the Zoomerang survey to give us feedback so that we can continue to um, improve and uh, serve you. Uh, as our audience. Both of these links will also be sent to you in the follow-up email. And Julie, thank you for those topic suggestions. I know there's a lot of interest uh, in Symbaloo for people who are helping their learners construct those personal learning environments. So thank you all again for your time this evening. We hope everyone has a wonderful night, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next Carteret Series webinar. Thank you, everyone.